Do you deadhead your flowers and do you know why you do it? Hey there, it's McCare. It is morning for me, so good morning if it's morning for you as well. If not, good day part that you're in. I've had a request recently to take you with me when I do my garden walks, either in the morning or the evening. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And as you may know, I take my coffee on my morning walks. That means that I have my garden apron on today so that I can have a pocket for my pruners because I have to carry a camera and a coffee and very sadly, I am not an octopus. So at this time of year, early mid-October, when I'm doing my walks, I'm kind of doing some early fall prep. Around here, our first frost, the average is November 20th, but the last two years, it's been late. like at least a month late. 2021's first frost was January 1st of 2022. So I have plenty of time on the fall prep, which is fortunate because you see all that grass? At some point, I'm gonna have to come out here. I probably won't be pulling it all the way out of the ground. I'll probably come out with a hori hori or with even my pruners and just cut it down and drop it right there. The request that I got asked me to do these if it wasn't too hard. <laughs> And to tell you the truth, these are the hardest for me because they're unscripted and I feel unorganized and I feel like I don't know what to say or do. <laughs> and y'all are going to be like, I'm bored, click off, unsubscribe, goodbye. But please don't. <laughs> please bear with me, I'm trying. As I'm standing right here, I see one thing that's going to need to be done pretty soon. Not today. <laughs> I'm going to have to move these potted plants with my mints in them into a sunnier location. They got moved here because it was too sunny for them and they were drying out too fast, but now they're going to appreciate getting a little bit more sunlight. Do you deadhead your flowers and do you know why you do it? I definitely deadhead. And the reason is, and it's not going to be such a big deal on this plant, when it gets this far, it's starting to make seeds or it's starting to think about making seeds. Once this plant fulfills its purpose in life, reproducing by making seeds, then it's kind of finished. Now, a big bush like this one isn't going to give it up because of one flower. Something that produces less flowers might do that. In this case, we can let some of them keep going. So I'm just going to clip a couple of them right now. I'm going to come down as low as I can without cutting off another See, there's no bud on that stem. It's just the dead flower. And I'm going to chop and drop today. Sometimes I carry them over to the compost bin and dump them in there. Other times I just chop them right here. See this one? It's looking kind of spent. We're gonna come down low. Oh, good example, see? See how this one has a little bud on its stem? So I'm gonna cut just above that bud and chop and drop that one. And then that's going to give the plant's energy back to the bud that's behind it. Oh no! There are grass seeds in my coffee! Tasty. I'm not setting my coffee underneath the cup, underneath the plant anymore. Y'all, how bad am I at keeping up with my okra? And here's what's happened. Here, it's so simple as this. I tried to order some ginger from the grocery and they only had like the giant package. And I didn't feel up for like processing a whole two pounds of ginger, so I didn't get any. So I'm not gonna make the dish I was gonna make with the okra, so I didn't pick my okra. Not smart. My black cherry tomato is the one that's producing the most. This black cherry goes up and over the fence. It's making me some good sized tomatoes. In addition to going over the fence, we have this branch that comes way over here. And we have this branch that splits off and comes down to the ground. So it's kind of doing all the things. It's sprawling, it's climbing, it's, it's doing it all. And it keeps giving me tomatoes. <laughs> so far, these are the only ones that I'm bringing in. And I'm bringing them in about this ripe so that should we happen to get a rain, which is not in the forecast right now, or should an animal find them, I'm getting them before they're ideal and they can finish ripening inside. Once they get the slightest bit of blush, they're ready to come in. And I can tell it's not ripe because when I try to squish it, it's really, really firm. A gentle little finger hug would make the tomato give in and squish like a marshmallow, but not that soft. I'm gonna put this in my pocket and hope I remember it's there. At least, at least it's not as bad as having an egg in your pocket. Look, another tithonia. And guess where we're headed? Another tithonia. 
on this one, I'm going to show you a lot more about deadheading because at this time of year, I get really selective about my deadheading. There's a lot of grass seeds in here. So I want to show you on this Tithonia kind of how I decide what's going to be pruned and what's not when I'm deadheading. You can see this one has a lot of dead flowers on it. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. And on the other plant, when I was talking about how it will, if it has too many, it will start thinking that it's finished. You can see it's got some buds, but not many. We have lots of spent flowers, right? I'm going to be selective in which ones I clip and which ones I leave because I don't want to leave them all on here. I don't want to tell the plant that it's finished, but <laughs> I do want to leave it some because, okay, look, you see this one? So this one is done and it's making seeds for like real, real seeds now. Something like that I can clip, but one that is close to that, I would leave to let it go ahead and make seeds. There's a jerk bird in the tree. That would be mockingbird, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna be selective and I'm gonna leave the ones that look older so that they can go on and make seeds. And I'm gonna cut off some of the ones that have just recently dropped their petals so that it takes some stress off of the plant. And I'm going back to that point where there's a bud. I'm gonna clip it there and I am Drop and dropping on the ground. Jerkbird. Sometimes we find friends. So I'm gonna chop and drop this, but I'm gonna be gentle about it. Carry on, little caterpillar. I'm gonna leave this one. That one's just starting to lose petals. And you might have guessed it's been a few days since I've done this. I'm gonna leave this one. It's looking pretty old. Look, here's a great example of one making seeds already. If you have Tithonia, these are pokey, just so you know. But then, There's Tithonia seed. And I can either take these in and put them in an envelope or a jar, or I can scatter them and hope they come up for next year. This one's to take in. That one's to take in. Now that I got all of those off, or a lot of those off, and I did selectively leave some, all of these buds that I've left behind are gonna have more energy now to flower. Everything that we've thrown on the ground, all that chop and drop, is mulch now. It's, it's making mulch, that's just what it's doing. And it's awesome. And it's a quick and easy way to mulch just a little bit. If you look down here, See, I didn't cover a whole lot of the grass, but there is some mulch down there and that is gonna be some organic material that's gonna break down and start to feed the soil and the soil life and all the little critters that come over here to hang out. This is the Sweet 100 that I started from a tomato by sticking a tomato in the soil. And he's finally decided to fruit. There's some little tomatoes down in there. And there's some little tomatoes up through here, so after all of the uh, flowers that it put on during the summer and did nothing, it is finally starting to do something. And I saw other tomatoes yesterday. Here we go. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you? Look. Green zebra tomato! I might actually get a green zebra. That would be super exciting. <gasps> no. Okay, we're not doing this. Look. Do you see that? This is not okay. Here's what I do about tomato hornworms. Sometimes I will come out and hunt them and I will go feed them the chickens. Most of the time I use my special technique, which thanks to a gardening group has become called the, the yoink and yeet. I was explaining like, what do you do when you find them? And I was like, honestly, I just yoink them off the plant and eat them over the fence. 
and it got this whole laugh going and now it's the yoink and yeet. So I'm gonna yoink and yeet this little guy. All right, this is why I need a real tripod. Y'all are way down there, like below my knee level, looking up at me, I'm very sorry. I try to cut it as low as I can so I don't have to handle them because I don't like them. I don't mind worms, but these feel like gummy worms that are made out of Velcro. They're really gross. I don't like grabbing them. There it is. So I have yoinked it off the plant and then, ah, little wormy. I have yeeted it over the fence. <laughs> and that is exactly how I deal with these things when I find them. Sometimes you can tell when they might be around. Like I'm really surprised. Oh, there he is. Okay, see how these branches are chewed on and they're missing all their stuffs. Look, you see it back there? On this branch. The hornworm hunt is another part of my, my walk ritual. Yoink. That one's especially gummy. And yeet. Now when I find one like that where I found a lot of chewed branches with it, I cut those off because I use those as my clue that there might be a hornworm. So if I come out later tonight and I'm like, ooh, look at all of this chewed up stuff and I start looking for a hornworm that I already cut off, yes, I am absent-minded enough to do that within 24 hours. So I cut all that off. And now I don't have any kind of like a, hey, there's a hornworm here hint trying to get me for later. Y'all, someone drank my coffee. I mean, it was me. I'm someone, but still it's gone. <laughs> I guess that means I have an extra hand. So we found two hornworms and one good tomato. It was not an awesome track record. I'm just going to prune off any of the branches that look super nasty anyways. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Do you see this little tomato baby? That's an Amish paste. There's a Cherokee purple. Where did you go? There's a black crimin here. Or at least there was last night. Ah, oh, here it is. Look at that. Isn't it cute? It's going to be delicious. I'm excited. And right now, right now, I'm not seeing any other hornworms. They are, I lied. There's one. They camouflage so well, don't they? Stay there. Be right back. Sacrificing flowers with this one. Nope. They just hide so well. Now, if you have a hard time finding your hornworms, definitely get yourself a black light flashlight and go out after dark. It even works at dusk and they'll glow under black light, just like your fingernails. So if you don't know if it's dark enough out to find your hornworms with your black light, just go outside and shine it on your fingernails. If your fingernails glow, you'll be able to find your hornworms. I'm not a big fan of like red, but the color on this zinnia, I need to figure out which one it is. It's like a blue red or a cool red. It's gorgeous. I love it so much. My housemates have been away, which they'll be back before you see this. So, you know, if you're worried about security, that means that I have had bread camp this weekend, a self-imposed bread camp where I watched bread baking videos and bread scoring videos, and I've been baking a lot of bread. So I've done two sourdough loaves, two chocolate loaves, and I have a regular sourdough loaf inside waiting for me to bake it after I finish this. And it has been so much fun. <laughs> and my sourdough has improved and I'm getting better at like forming the loaves and all that kind of stuff. And it's really exciting. And the best part is that I found a friend who would take one of the regular loaves and one of the chocolate loaves for me. <laughs> so she came and got those yesterday. So thank you. Thank you for picking those up because I've enjoyed the baking, but I don't need that much bread. <laughs> All right, so I'm going around just still deadheading and observing little things like this. So if you get out, oh, she doesn't look like she's okay. If you get out early, you can find some bees still sleeping if it's cool out. This one looks like she's having a bad time. This might be her last day as a bee. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I'm so sorry, baby. Well, she flew off, so she's okay enough to fly, but... She didn't look like she was having the best day of her life. And I'm going to deadhead that flower because it wasn't looking very good anyways. Poor bee. It's always, I feel so sad when I come out and I find a little bee and it's struggling and I'm like, I want to help you, but I can't because I'm just a human. So as I'm going through and chopping, dropping, chopping, dropping, as I'm going through and chop and dropping all of these flowers, I'm seeing some spots that are kind of bare and need some like real mulch, straw mulch. This is a good time to start coming in and layering 
just like in the summer when we use our mulch to protect the ground from the temperatures i read in a book i want to say it was the independent farmstead but it might not have been um, i read in a book that underneath a plant like if you have a ground cover plant like i have the comfries or the mullins that spread along the ground or any kind of mints that grow along the ground it can be 20 degrees cooler she came back it can be 20 degrees cooler on the ground just underneath that plant than the ground like that's exposed just like our ground cover plants our mulch helps to shade the ground but in the winter time it acts as an insulation and it keeps the ground warmer so it's kind of a buffer between the outside environment and the ground so in the winter we want nice thick mulch to help keep the ground warm to keep it from freezing it's going to protect the roots of the plants that are left when we get down to time for our hard freeze we're going to want to have thick mulch all over our gardens additionally as that mulch has the whole fall and winter to break down by springtime it's going to provide a lot of nutrients to the microorganisms in the soil and it's going to make your soil healthier but it's a lot of work to come out here and mulch the whole garden right before a frost so i start doing it a little bit early and chop and drop is part of it like you can see how much we have down here in a moment, I'm going to go up and grab some hay and start to throw it on a couple of the bare spots I found. And if I do this little by little, I never end up trapped with like the first frost is coming tomorrow and I need to get all of this done today. Shh, she's still sleeping. I'm not going to chop and drop that flower. I'm going to leave it for her. In addition to making sure that I leave some flowers to go to seed i'm also making sure that i leave enough for the pollinator so that they have some food and they have places to rest like we just saw with that bee we want to make sure that we are leaving enough for all of the life in our gardens to carry on so i have one of those bare spots right here and i'm just going to throw some this appears to be hay i'm going to throw some hay down now, I've already chop and dropped. You can see there's some zinnia buds here that have some seeds on them, that's fine. There's a couple of okra down there, that's fine. I'm gonna mulch right on top of all of it. It's gonna be perfect. I'm going right over the grass that's growing here. It's just all gonna be fine. <laughs> We're just adding organic material. There's mold in there. Just want to get this all spread out and we're starting to build up for winter i am not expecting to get all my winter mulching done at one time that is not spoon friendly we're just going to build it up over time and if i do a little bit like that every now and then it gets done like this you know it's not a big deal i don't have that oh my gosh it's 38 and it's about to be freezing and i need to get everything done I'm gonna work on it early and start just building it up as I see the spots. Now, if you use hay, it will sprout grass. But if this is the surface of the hay, it's growing up from here. It's not like rooted down into the ground yet. So it plucks really easily. That's all I have to do out here today. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please click the little like button, and if you're not subscribed, please do so. Both of those things let YouTube know that people like you like videos like mine, and that helps me grow. I hope you have a great day. Later, y'all.